was his undoing. You should investigate. To get the orb back, you travel to Ghost Ship Cove, a known pirate hideout. The inside of the cave connects to a fissure on the coastline. It seems large enough to contain another ocean. Deep sailors dread passing through this area. There are myriad tales of ships disappearing here. It's my turn. Done. They're here. A beautiful voice in the sea calls out to you. You'd heard of Mermaid's legendary curiosity. She asks you many questions. From your conversation, you learn Gustav's ship was indeed attacked by pirates. That means the pirates likely have the orb. According to the Mermaid, the pirates scattered throughout the islands use this area as a hub for trade amongst themselves. Rumors claim that among their treasures is a magic lamp that can call forth a genie. Oh! <laughs> 
Being duplicitous. It was all a ruse. The pirates were spying on you the entire time.
waltz right into the pirate's den. They're coming to attack you. The pirates have the magic lamp. Your situation will turn quite dire if you don't take it from them. The pirate has called the genie out. Quick, get the lamp out of the pirate's hands. The pirate has called the genie out. Quick, get the lamp out of the pirate's hands. See you next Magic Lamp granted a wish and flew off. You find the orb stolen by the Prime Minister among the treasure the pirates left behind. You reclaim the stolen royal orb. The orb you retrieved must be returned to the castle.
allow this allow As you leave the temple, a ragged old man, his raspy voice, you can give him a coin. Welcome to my shop. What would you like? back. You have a request.
the princess and count can't contain their surprise. They'd already resigned themselves to the worst possible outcome. You've won a great deal of favor from the royal family. The princess smiles upon you, and Dean trusts you implicitly. The succession imbroglio has been dealt with. Once the king is buried and parliament approves, Dean will succeed the king. Still, the future king wears a somber expression. He knows Heidland still faces many difficult challenges. The Shinyak Orc tribe is pushing in from the east, and more tribes are joining their ranks. They're an ever-present menace. Also, while Heidland is currently at peace, Bulgar will surely strike if they sense an advantage. Worse still, the evil enchanters of the Mornion religion have cast their lot with the Bulgan threat. You are beginning to grasp why the last king of Heidland risked his life to find the dragon's crown. I need it, Dean mumbles quietly. After completing a large task, you return to a normal routine, fulfilling requests on behalf of the Adventurer's Guild. <coughs> Whilst reviewing the outstanding requests at the Guild, you spot one from the magician, Lucane. It is about rune magic, but since you don't know too much about the subject, you're not sure what is requested. You tell the Guildmaster, Samuel, that you'll accept this job and pay Lucane a visit to inquire about the details. Hmm, you're back. You entered Lucane's tower to ask about his request. When you tell him that you have taken on his request, he immediately starts filling you in on the details. Certain Elysian ruins are highly regarded as a sacred area by monks. Unfortunately, monsters are desecrating these ruins. Monks were dispatched to purify the area, but the golems that used to protect the ruins have turned on the monks. Golems are controlled with rune magic. They asked Lucane to craft new golems with runes, to pit against the old golems. So Lucane requested that someone go in his stead and use rune magic to craft golems. Do you comprehend how runes work? If you need an explanation, you can ask him. Lucane says that he would be delighted to discuss this and launches headlong into a discussion about runes. Runes are magical letters that spirits and fairies carved into the world. You may have seen them yourself. Touching runes makes letters sparkle and float. Runes are a combination of three characters that create various effects. However, runes won't work unless a spirit or fairy is present. That's what you gather from Lucane's long lecture. Lucane hands you a stone that has a rune carved into it. Activate the two runes on the statue, then add the stone's rune to cast the three-letter spell that animates it. You press forward and begin looking for runes. Oh, how can I help you? You head to the ancient temple ruins at Lucane's behest. There, you need to animate statues using rune magic.
In the age of the gods, mankind built a giant tower in a sacred place in an attempt to reach the world of the gods. That arrogance angered the gods, and it is said that the entire city was leveled. You meet a female warrior monk who was injured in the battle against the demons. She was sent to purify this sanctuary. <sighs> to purify this area, the holy seal must be placed upon the altar of the temple. She cannot walk, so the task falls to you.
Oh, yes. Do you still remember Lucane's lecture on rune activation? In order to defeat the golem blocking your path, you need to have a golem of your own. Protectors of the temple are now aligned with the evil forces. Come <laughs> on. 
notice the statue coming to life and have come to disrupt your work. Protect your golem so that it does not get destroyed before it reaches the temple. The magnificent stone tablet has been placed high upon the altar in the center of the temple. When you remove it and replace it with the holy seal, the ruins are purified with a blinding light. You decide to take the evil-looking stone tablet back with you. You can feel unspeakable evil emanating from the stone tablet you removed from the altar. Perhaps Lucane should examine it.
I help you? Allow this. As you leave the temple, a ragged old man slumped in the road. His raspy v You can give him a coin. He doesn't even acknowledge. You probably won't. You report your success to Lucane. He smiles and tells you to keep the runestone to use in your adventures. Now you can view research materials about rune magic whenever you need. You can also buy runestones from Lucane. You produce the stone tablet you brought back from the temple ruins. He swallows hard and examines the tablet. The ancient demon script is difficult for even Lucane to read. He can only deduce that it is a contract of some sort. Upon further examination, Lucane finds something he can read. The name of the demon king, Majina Gusna Idrashin. The name jogs your memory. You've heard it before. But where? Lucane cannot tell anything else about the tablet. Oh, how can I help you?
which one? The name of the Demon King, Majino Gusna Idrashin. You're positive you've heard that name somewhere in town. Wandering one, how can I help you? The old man grows excited when you walk by. He grabs the tablet. You now remember him mumbling the Demon King's name earlier. When you try to take the tablet back, the old man chants a spell. Instantly, the stone tablet crumbles to dust. You stand there, gobsmacked, when the old man thanks you in a calm, clear voice. He continues his story. We had obtained the crown of Elysia known as the Dragon's Crown. However, it had no power to control the dragons. Those legends were myths to lionize the Elysian King. The crown in the ruins was merely decorative. However, I decided that I would infuse the crown with the power the legends spoke of. It would be my life's work. To do this, I would go to any lengths. I collaborated with shadowy cabals and sold my soul to the Demon King for power. Without the tablet, the crown's power will now vanish. The religion that used me cannot control the ancient dragons. The old man tells you in closing that he is the magician Wallace. In the next moment, he appears to melt into the air. The magician Wallace who disappeared is Lucane's friend. You must tell him of this surprising encounter. You tell Lucane everything that transpired with Wallace, the tablet, and the dragon's crown. Lucane is listening intently to your story when he suddenly bolts upright. All of his lost memories have returned to him. It was Wallace who killed Lucane. He asked Lucane to come to the labyrinth so he could steal Lucane's black runestones. Those runestones are special runes that make a teleportation gate. They're said to be made by a fairy with ancient powers. Wallace was used to open a gate to the illusionary land. The ancient dragon sleeps there, a land the goddess sealed. The shadowy religion must have wanted to be able to control that giant dragon. They shared Wallace's goal. Even rumors of this organization having the power of dragons would be chaotic. You can't just hope it'll never be found. Lucane says that if the crown were to be anywhere, it would certainly be in the Mage's Tower. Morneon took over the Mage's Tower, likely because it housed many types of research, as well as Wallace's laboratory. Oh! How can I help you? You infiltrate the Mage's Tower to find the Dragon's Crown. Hmm, you're back. You have a request. <laughs> 